Hello, everybody. It's Katiri. And Owen and Kyla. And welcome to the Soothsayer's Tea feature episode. And we're going to be talking about getting back on the horse. Yes. The metaphorical horse, or the physical horse, if you are into horse yeah. riding. Like I was from ages six to nine. I feel like we're getting a life story. Yeah. I, I thought I'd share that. I want, listen, I haven't been bullied enough <laughs> lately. I thought that um, if I told everyone I used to horse ride, it would really, really sink in that I am insane. <laughs> I think it just kind of mediates. You're like, you know what? I'm not that sensitive about this one. So why don't you make fun of me for this one instead of what you're actually making fun of me right now for? Listen, don't worry about it. Okay. Move. Move on. Stop talking. Keep going. <laughs> um yeah so we're kind of really um just spitting out on this one because there is definitely some cards where we're just like we're not quite sure what to discuss on it so there's a lot of episodes where we do have like questions um the one that we just had with theo on the lovers feature episode was fantastic because we do have like actual like planned subjects to talk about um this one we're just gonna whip her out there because the one thing that i've been noticing lately probably something in the stars is that a lot of people are being to fall back on their practice or fall not fall back but fall behind on their practice and they're kind of have their hands in the air they don't know what to do with their hands things are just <laughs> <laughs> yes that was a reference but they're very much in a position where they just don't know how to get back on, on in into their practice again. And I can kind of understand that. I think there's a lot of chaos going on. At, at a time of recording, I say recording because we're recording the day before our actual launch date because that's how we are as people. Um, there is uh-huh. <laughs> there is an eclipse coming up on the 30th. So I'm sure that there's a lot of chaos going on right now. Um, and I think a lot of people are kind of, Wait, yeah. There's an eclipse on, on the coming? the 30th, yeah. Oh, a lunar shit. eclipse. So, with everything kind of going on that's kind of right now, I think a lot of people want to try to fall back on their spirituality, fall back on their practice for comfort. But either they've been out of it for so long, or maybe they're s- still in those beginner stages where they haven't really found their niche and their praxis. So, we're just going to discuss what we've done to really kind of do that. And honestly, I just whipped all that out of my ass. Um, this was not planned. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah now i'm now i have to sit here and pre-think what i'm gonna say for this episode because listen i think there's something very beautiful about us um coming into this episode with absolute confidence and recording it no matter what despite the fact we have no plan and this episode's feature episode being themed on the chariot yeah well and I th- honestly there is a little bit of a thing there because the chariot doesn't really plan it just does it just goes uh-huh. And I, I actually, I appreciate that deeply. I do. <laughs> I do appreciate the fact yes, that we are it. like very confident in our abilities to do this podcast and we will figure that out at the end if it works out. Yeah. But look, okay, so let's talk, let's get into it. Let's talk about what to do if you may have been neglecting your practice a little bit, because I certainly know that I have been, um, I used to do daily devotionals, uh, very small ones, just little ones. And I used to be so like active in my practice. I used to be sitting with my deities and drinking my Starbucks every single (laughs) day. Um, (laughs) uh, But recently, as in recently in the last six-ish months, um, that has petered out a little bit. I have gotten quite sick. I've gotten COVID twice. as well as some other health complications. I have moved country, um, changed majors from chemistry, religious studies, and had numerous, numerous other things in my life um, start to affect me. And it was just, it was a little bit too much because when I came home at the end of the day, I didn't want to sit there for 30 minutes and pray in Irish. I wanted to go to fucking bed and watch Netflix. (laughs) And that is what I did. Um, And look, if any of you have also been doing this, this doesn't make you a bad practitioner or a bad pagan or a bad devotee or whatever the yeah, fuck you call yourself. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> Listen, I'm making a point. <laughs> Don't tell them that. <laughs> no, look, um, we all struggle. This is a lifelong journey that you are embarking on and you're allowed to have periods of inactivity, or periods of rest and break. Um, that is perfectly natural and that is not something that you need to feel ashamed about or feel bad for. Yeah, exactly. And I think that 
there is that kind of um, impression that you have to be doing a daily practice. And I think because there was a bit of discourse around this when beginners are asking, how do I get better? Right. And the answer is daily practice. Right. And I think it's right there in the word. Let's talk about like the English language there. Daily practice. When you practice, you get better. And I think that got the impression, like that gave out the impression that if you are not doing a daily practice, you're bad at your craft or you're bad at spirituality. No, that's not the mm-hmm. case at all. It's the case that if you choose or choose or want to get better at what you're doing, the best and easiest way to do that is to have a daily practice. However, you do not have to have a daily practice in any way, shape or form. I think that's the where there's kind of like some information cost because there was some um, kind of uproar about ableism saying, well, I can't do a daily practice that make me a bad pagan. No, it does not make you a bad pagan in any way, shape or form. It's just that it's like, hey, if you want to get f- healthy, then you're going to do push up, sit ups and drink plenty of juice. Like that's just how it is. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're bad if you don't do that. Yeah, I would similarly view this but from a slightly different mindset in that you can obviously get better without a daily practice i just think a daily practice is the quickest way to sort of achieve your goals but the thing is why are you in a rush why do you need to do it the quickest possible way because if you're doing it because you want to be sort of better than someone else then that is not the reason that you should be doing it if you're doing it because i don't know you just want to be better as quickly as possible then yeah sure that's fine, that's valid, do that. But the thing is, you don't need a daily practice to get better. You just, a daily practice is going to speed things along because the more you do something, the better you get at it. But the thing is, speeding things along in a lifetime journey is, it's kind of pointless. Like you'll get there in the end. Why does it matter? Because you will get there as long as you do practice. It doesn't have to be daily. You should want to experience your practice because you want to do it because you love your practice. Like there, I do, again, who would have thought? I'm a tarot reader. I do tarot because I love it. I deeply love the practice. And we haven't really discussed a terrible amount about our other practices, um, whether it be regarding spirit work or things like that. And a lot of that has to do with just, it's private to me, it's close to me. Um, I don't think it's anybody's business, really, at the end of the day. But on the flip side of the coin, as you said, like, if you want to get better, a daily practice is a very, very like effective way efficient Efficient and it's effective way but it's not the only way and i think that's the biggest problem is that when people are are kind of step back a little bit and they want to get back into it they think it has to be go 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 right from the get-go and that's not necessarily how you have to do it if you want to by all means you can but in my experience if i go right back into doing a daily practice um i usually end up burning out pretty quickly yeah, uh, 100%. What I actually do, and this is a little bit unconventional, when, I, um, when I've taken a little break from my practice or I've been busy and I want to brush up on a couple of things, the first thing that I do to sort of get myself back into the mindset is I read, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the book. It's not a witchcraft book uh, or an occult book in any way, shape or form. It is entirely uh, like fantasy and fiction. Um, but just like seeing this sort of... Um, like fantastical portrayal of magic sort of helps me ground myself in the way that's like okay so this is like it helps me sort of separate real magic from fake magic when I'm looking at um what is obviously meant to be fiction, fantasy yeah. uh yeah fiction and fantasy and I I'm trying for the love of god to remember the name of this book and it's not coming to me so that'll come to me later I've decided um and I just I get back to the basics and I know we said that a lot like if you're like getting back into your practice go back to your basics but like what are the basics and the basics can be anything the basics can be anything that you previously have felt very educated on and you could still be educated on but you haven't talked about it in a while and so you go back and you look at it so maybe that for me if I took a break from tarot which I actually don't really do um tarot's become like a part of my life not just part of my spiritual practice at this point and so it's something that i do daily anyway but um for for example if i were to take a break from tarot i would start back in by doing a reading or reading a book about reading like i I, like that's how i would start yeah and and just gonna add on to that what you're um getting at is that i think we're a bit of a different 
case when it comes to tarot, that's basically for us is like saying like, I'm going to take a break from walking. 100 <laughs> percent. so yeah. like i think that's a little bit of a bad example but continue because i think it's important for us to say these things for people who are not as established in tarot so go ahead yeah um like look for a lot of people and for a lot of people listening to this podcast i would say even all or at least the very large majority of people listening to this podcast tarot is a tool and it's something that you use spiritually to communicate with these deities or to sort out sort of metaphysical problems in your life and even sort of um mundane problems too like you of course can do tower readings on mundane problems but for the most part it's something that you're approaching spiritually and that is not really something that i see it as anymore obviously obviously i see spiritual uh, tarot as a spiritual practice but um i it's become like such a huge part of my life now that it's just like to me it's like eating breakfast like i'm eating breakfast and i pull a tarot card and like it's something that's become a part of my life and not so much something that's part of my spiritual practice yeah and i think a little bit off the tangent there because i think it's important to actually find a practice like that that you can um walk with per se and i'm trying to think of a better um, word to uh, explain it but i'm talking like a practice that becomes very 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 natural to you um meditation is a good example of that that people should really be able to get accustomed to that it becomes so easy and i think that's a lot of times when people get overwhelmed and they kind of burn out it's almost because they don't have that one anchored practice that they've really focused on And what I mean by that is like when you don't have a really focused practice, and I'm not just saying tarot, like I know people who are um, like they're spirit workers, they're mediums, they're um, energy workers. They don't have a bread and butter anchor that allows them to always fall back on. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who just listened to that awkward pause, that was the awkward pause of me speaking into a microphone whose mute button I had pushed. Um, <laughs> Good job. What, <laughs> um, what I was going to say was that not having this sort of anchored practice does not make you less of a practitioner. It just means that you may be a little bit less experienced at least i think something that new practitioners and beginners and beginners can be someone who's been doing this for 10 years it doesn't have to be someone who's been doing this for six months off tiktok um it's a practice that you resonate so deeply with that it becomes a part of your daily life like it shouldn't it's no longer a chore like you no longer have to sort of set aside time for it in your day or else you won't get to it it's sort of it's like it becomes just a part of like the definite things in your yeah. life and again um when i said earlier it's like asking us not to walk right and i think that it's important because yeah. we're again the chariot kind of indicates mastery is that if you really want to kind of get really anchored into your spirituality is actually taking out all others and finding the one thing that you love and mastering it's not the right term but really falling in love with one part of your practice and owning it owning it's the best word you have to own a part of your practice and i think that for all of the pagans that we know all the practitioners i know they have that one niche that one thing that they own completely i know some really really good hexers i know some really really good mediums i know some really good tarot readers yourself is one of them i know these people thank you, know, you. Yeah. um <laughs> i know really strong folk practitioners i know very strong like um ceremonialists like there's that one thing that they enjoy and i think for a lot of people who are newer and where they kind of get burnt out is that we encourage for people to kind of read and research a lot of different paths to find their niche. But what's important is actually, you know what, stopping and picking the niche and going with it. Because I think that's the biggest problem is that too many people are afraid of making the quote unquote wrong choice. And that's where you just need to grow a pair of brass, brass balls and just do it. Just find the one that you love and stick with it, whether it be herbalism or like anything um buddhism anything of the sort you just got to find something and and that's i'm not saying that you can't pull away from it if you decide it's not for you but you got to laser focus your practice a little more and i think a lot of people kind of fail to do that 
Yeah. And the other thing as well, I like, I have two things to say about that. The first being that like, for me, that part of my practice is what I sort of brought me to the practice in the first place. And so for me, that is actually folk medicine. Um, because like folk remedies and folk medicine and stuff have been a huge part of how my family deal with like sicknesses along with obviously modern medicine but like the first thing that you like if okay I always use this example but if I got a burn on my body um I don't why can I not think of one okay yeah okay so I was making a quesadilla (laughs) a couple like I think a year ago I and I was using this very deep rimmed ceramic pan and two weeks in a row, I reached directly into that pan to touch the quesadilla and burnt my wrist. And so my grandmother was like, first of all, you're a fucking idiot. Um, second of all, here is this jar of shit that I keep in the fridge for not actually feces. This not specific actually feces. purpose. Yeah, okay. Not not actual shit, but this is like it's like, okay, so this is like and this was a folk remedy because it wasn't like so this part of my practice has been there since I was like literally a yeah. child, like a very fucking unable to walk child and um so this is something that's always drawn me to it and that is part of my practice and the other thing that I was going to say has now left the building because I went on such a long rant about this but no I think what you're getting at is like this is very much so a it was a part of almost the culture in your household growing up right and yeah. funny enough actually I did post this on my Instagram it was a quote from the scent of lemon and rosemary um working with domestic magic and Hest- with Hestia by Rachel Henderson. So I'm just going to read this quote because when it comes to, because I think it's kind of very poignant when it comes to medicine and folk medicine in general, it says when using the spells and recipes in the scent of ro- lemon and rosemary, keep in mind that modern medicine is for treating disease and herbal medicine is for treating symptoms. Yeah, that's a great way to put it, to be honest. Um, I love that for them to be honest good quote um <laughs> well it's true because i think a lot of people when we get into holistic medicine yeah. they're just like it's gonna cure your cancer it's like no it's fucking not it's a here to alleviate some like distressing parts of things mm-hmm. that you might be suffering which is very very important because that's kind of helps you be able to take that extra step towards health but it's never going to replace like regular ass medicine come on yep 100 percent, and people will like turn to like folk medicine and stuff sometimes as sort of a last resort and and i'm looking at this and i'm like okay i see i i okay i hate i hate when this happens because people do come to me sometimes looking for help when it comes to like folk medicine and stuff and i hate being the person to tell them this but like it's not magic and like i know <laughs> I know that there's a lot of correspondence there between folk medicine and holistic healing and sort of like magical healing or whatever, but that's not really what magic is. And that's not really what folk medicine is. There's a lot of overlap there, but folk medicine was pre-modern medicine for a reason. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And uh... Anyway, (laughs) the the chapter, I guess, the feature episode, no, but like finding these things to you that are very deeply important and that sort of brought you to developing your spiritual practice in the first place is what's going to help you develop it again. Exactly. Um, And like I said, I think one of the first kind of advice that we can get first pieces of advice we can get for people who are um, struggling in their getting back into the practice is like, where's your anchor? Where's your anchor practice that you can kind of get back into again? Because I think that, It's fine to get bored with things. Do you know how bored I get with tarot? Sometimes. I'm extremely, (laughs) I'm presuming. It happens at times, right? And it's normal. Um, Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that if, when I step back, it's the first thing I step back into, right? Is even though I know a reasonable amount about it, I'm not going to say I know everything. I will make it a point to go back to my old books and read my books again, find a new book, read something else. And I will get back into that. And I find that ends up, almost becoming the floodgates kind of open up for other things I can bring into my practice and then wanting to do a daily Mm -hmm. practice and wanting to do my daily um, devotions and such. So, and I think that's where a lot of fresher or um, more beginner practitioners struggle is because they're still trying to find that one path. Yeah. And the thing is, 
semi hot take if when you stepped back from your practice you still hadn't really found this sort of anchor path or this niche that you fit into or this thing that just felt perfect for you then you may as well sort of start fresh like there's not much to pick up on if that makes sense like I I like when you're asking me how to get back into stuff but what you were into in the first place was a lot of things in a very surface level way there's nothing that I can really tell you to get back into because there's nothing you really got into in the first yeah. place. And we see that a lot with people who um, get into, like, again, we've complained about this before, social media, spirituality, where they're getting all their advice from, like, Pinterest and Tumblr and Instagram and TikTok. And that's basically the extent of it. Um, a lot of these, <laughs> and maybe I'm just being a fucking asshole, which sometimes I can be. I'm a blunt ass. It's a virtue for me. But I, I will straight up be like, can you take a picture of your bookshelf and they have like one and a half books on there by a social media influencer and I'm like well there's your problem (laughs) right (laughs) (laughs) yeah I mean the thing is like foundational texts are going to be probably the most important at the end of the day a lot of modern books and a lot of um content that's created nowadays is going to be people's opinions that they've formed based off of reading these foundational texts or having these foundational yeah. experiences. And there's nothing wrong and... with beginner books. I, I'm just going to set that expectation right there. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with beginner books or people that, um, like, again, are kind of a really social media savvy because um, I know that Frankie, Kate which just came out with a book and I just received it. I went through it. I'm like, this is great. Like, this is a great beginner book. Um, I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was very poignant. Um, am I going to get a whole lot out of it? No, but I am going to see a different, um, like, point of view, a different aspect. And that's also important. Mm-hmm. 100%. And I would also like to point out, um, for any of you who are listening and have read or are about to read Spells for Change by Chaotic yes. Chan or Frankie, somewhere in there either the front or the back i can't remember i back. am thanked by yes name. somebody yes. on this podcast that's not me has been thanked by name in print in a very mm-hmm. like this is not like a amazon printed book this is in like burns noble or in our case up here like indigo it's in books the stores like big ones um it's basically what i'm saying is that there's a celebrity on this podcast and it's owen listen i'm a celebrity no but look okay i have watched how fucking hard frankie has worked at writing this book and all of the shit that they have gone through to make it and i am so proud of them they're like 10 out of 10 good even if the book was shit i wouldn't even care at this point because the amount of fucking hard work and effort and research that they put into making it I don't even yeah, care. Exactly. I, I don't honestly, even care. It's not shit though. I you did should. go through it and it, it looks very, very good. But with that being said, if I were to give this book to somebody who's newer or somebody who's reconnecting on their path, I would not be like, this is the Bible for everything that you need to know about witchcraft. I'm like, start here. Hopefully this will inspire you to have a hundred books on your shelf and to read all hundred of those books. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, people are saying, like, they have, like, these huge, huge book lists of things that you need to read. Like, I, like, my, um, for those of you who don't know, there is a resource document linked in my link tree um, that was compiled entirely by the wonderful at an Irish pagan on TikTok and Twitter, Tegan, my dear friend. <laughs> um, but it's this very long resource doc compiled um, by Tegan, but with information from a lot of different practitioners and um uh it's long sorry that's my point yeah it's very long and people have come to me and they're like okay this is very long and I'm like yeah I know it's a lot of stuff it's a lot of stuff you need to read a lot of stuff you need to research like you don't need to have all of this done in the next month there's no time limit there's no there's no due date on this. Um, and I know personally, like for my little ADHD self, I do appreciate a due date sometimes because then I can speed read it in the last <laughs> hour before it's due. But um, with your practice, the like realistically procrastinate it as much as you want because you have a lot of time to get where you want to be. Just know that if you're doing so, like you are semi doing yourself a disservice because you're going slower than like you would like to be. But also, like, whatever. Who cares? Go at your own pace, honestly. Like, there's going to be some people yeah. that, like, honestly, they pick up on things within a year, right? And they're instantly, like, the most expert of experts. Because I'm not sure how long Frankie's been in, like, the, um, like, a, a 
neo-pagan but i'm pretty sure in their book it said like along the lines of six years to be six years and writing yeah. a book dude <laughs> holy shit right that's killer mm-hmm. but also i know that there's people who's been doing this for 25 30 years and they have not changed their practice at all because they don't feel the need to or they never kind of develop any further than very basics because it's what works for them. We're not expecting people to know everything. We're expecting people to be comfortable in their practice. Yeah. And that's all that you really need. Like if people are having these insane, realistic expectations, unrealistic expectations of you um, to like suddenly become like the best, which knowledgeable in every single subject ever, like that's just ridiculous because you don't need to be knowledgeable in every single subject ever. Like I am, fully confident for example that i can do what i need to do with ease and effectively and not learn certain things like you don't need to learn everything um but like if you want to then you sh- can do it at your own pace like do it yeah. whenever and that comes into burnout too because there might be a concept of like i'm going to do all this because i need to be knowledgeable right and i don't mm-hmm. think that is really healthy because, for example, like if I am, if if a, if a Kabbalist were to sit down with me and start talking about like the correspondence when it comes to like, like Kabbalistic um, connections when it comes to tarot, I would shut my hole and listen because I don't know anything about it. And I think the thing is, is that it's important to know what you don't know and listen when you're able to because i see that a lot and i'll be frank if you see it with young practitioners a lot or people who i call it the only kid on the block syndrome when because they're the only person in their friend group that's into this they think that they know more than they actually do right so what ends up happening Mm -hmm. is that they end up arguing right their point and it's just like yeah your points is subjectively right but there's also a counterpoint here that you should also listen to but they don't want to acknowledge anything else because they're too busy trying to hoard all this knowledge to be able to just kind of tell people how it is and like i know what's going on because in real life i know everything and all my other friends hang off my every word it doesn't work that way you need to be hungry for knowledge not because you want to know everything you should be hungry for knowledge because it makes you more comfortable in your own craft not necessarily better at your craft because i don't like even saying that because i almost puts it like there's power levels or something of the sort no you have to just be more comfortable and confident in your craft not necessarily better at your craft and when i say that i'm saying that in a way that i hope makes sense because you should always want to be better but you should always want to be better because you want to be better not because you want to be better than somebody else yeah better you like when you're striving to be better you should be striving to be better than your previous self not another person yeah and i see a lot of burnout because people are struggling against other practitioners and we see that in online spaces a lot and it's i don't care about other practitioners if anything if somebody knows better than i am i'm like oh okay shut my hole and i'm sitting on my tailbone here and i'm listening (laughs) and like this is not exclusive to the witchy or occult spaces like this happens in mainstream education all of the time and what's worse even is in mainstream education and a lot of it it's encouraged by sort of like teachers and principals and whatever like they encourage this academic competition when that's not really fair when not everyone's starting from the same position and not everyone wants to be doing this and then they're kind of being forced to by the majority or their peers and it's just it's a little bit like where is the need like why are you burning these people out unnecessarily because i know i was burnt the fuck out of myself when i first joined like the online occult space because like i had research and like i had my knowledge and i was fairly comfortable in my practice when i joined but there was all of this new information and all of these new people that i was like in com- in quotation marks competing with um that I had to suddenly know like everything. And then I did a shit ton of research in the space of two months and literally could not pick up a book for like six months. So yeah, don't do that either. Right? Yeah. And I think that, and I, I think that is, like you said, it's, it's not just in witchy and like pagan circles, because I think that this as a religion, it's not like you can go to a church and have a deacon or a preach a priest tell you what to think right? It's very much so a, especially in the case of solitary practitioners, which I believe honestly 90% of people are now, 
is that you have to really kind of think for yourself and there's going to be a lot of strong opinions, right? Um, I'm making a point to be like, although I'm very confident in tarot, I'm going to say my piece, but I'm not going to argue people unless they're terribly, terribly wrong. If they're saying something along the lines of like, the yeah. tower it just means that you're going to go boss, babe. Then I'm going to be like, okay, we're going to fucking fight. But that's a different story altogether. But for the most part is that to keep yourself from bur- burning out and being able to be confidently, again, name of the um, episode, getting back on the horse, is actually just not take things so personally. <laughs> And just allow other people to practice how they want to practice as long as they're being safe and not completely stupid. And honestly, who cares? Yeah, like, whatever, let them do whatever they want. They're on uh, the internet. <laughs> realistically, yeah, I was going to say, like, even realistically, if someone is being stupid and it's not going to have, like, ripple effects in the community and it's really only going to affect themselves, like, you can warn them and be like, hey, you're being an idiot. But also, like, chill. <laughs> Like, who cares? They're going to make this mistake for themselves whether or not you tell them not to a lot of the time anyway. Um, And so it's honestly better to just let people sort of make these mistakes sometimes and let them learn than it is to burn yourself out trying to stop them when what they are doing doesn't actually affect you realistically at all. And I think that comes into just making sure things are a community and having things are almost like a bit of a democracy. Because like everybody's allowed to kind of say their piece and again, as long as it's not harmful, right, then just let it be. And that sound kind of almost seems like almost counterproductive to the chariot. But having that kind of self-determination, you're not going to let other people get in your way, including the people who are yeah. you disagree with. And knowing when it's going to serve you best to just not be engaging with people is also very much the chariot. Because the chariot is focused on the goal. They're focused on themselves and they're focused on getting where they want to be. And they aren't necessarily going to be focused on the external things that could be distracting them when it's not going to serve their like overall purpose or their journey that they're trying to get themselves yeah. on. And I think that's coming into, I, I think I said it like a hundred times now, but having that anchor practice, because if you have that anchor practice that you are very confident in, right, then new drinking game, take a shot every time Kateri says anchor, anchor, anchor. <laughs> get liquor right now, anchor, 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 anyway, so oh my God. I think the problem is, is that, or a lot of people, they, uh, just because you, and this is, gets complicated because I'm going to just throw it out there. I see this a lot, again, on social media, especially the witch types that make me want to rip out my hair. Um, the witch type, I la- <laughs> and I'll, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. You can't just pick a witch identity and then just be like, this is who I am now. That's not how it works. You don't just pick your identity in that one. Especially when they're so completely arbitrary and ridiculous. Yeah. So I see that... Um, a good example, herbalism. A lot of people think like, mm, it's like mixing herbs together and like skipping through the forest and picking the mushrooms. Nah, man, herbs can kill you. Herbs can absolutely give you the dirtiest rashes. Like they can- The dirtiest <laughs> the rashes. dirtiest rashes. And I'm not just talking about like poison ivy. I'm talking like cinnamon. Like you can have allergic reactions. You can fuck up your lungs. Like, there's so many... Oh, with cinnamon? Yeah, fucking Oh my god, time. just not cinnamon, like, just in general. Like, any type of herb. No. So, you hear... And again, a lot of this comes <laughs> from just inexperience. So, I'm... Either way, you just hear it with people like, I'm a green witch. Okay, cool. And then they start spitting out these most arbitrary correspondences, which I'm sure that will be true. But, like, when they're taking cinnamon and mixing it with, like, lemon and putting it on their plants and i'm like and then they don't understand why they're cursed and their plants won't grow i'm like are you fucking stupid this is what i mean Mm -hmm. by like actually understanding your practice it's not so much as saying oh i now identify as a tarot reader so you will now have to listen to me because i identify as a tarot reader and i have life experience as a tarot reader no man i have years of study as a tarot reader i've had I've had online arguments with people it's like that were just like, okay, can you explain to me? You me? arguing with Never. people? I've had arguments for people where I'm just like, hey, can you explain this to me? And they're like, um, no. 
that's just like well why not and then after you get out of it like oh because you actually don't know what the fuck you're talking about it's not that you don't because i end up because the thing is i already know what they're talking about it's very simple stuff but they're like uh you should do your own research i'm like okay i did so what's this and then they try to dance around a little bit i'm like i need you to explain this to me because i already explained it to you so i need you to counter explain and then they won't because i'm just like oh this has nothing to do with research you just don't know what the fuck you're talking about I actually have a very perfectly beautiful example of this that I brought up in the episode that Theo was on. Um, I got into an argument with someone online because, and I will say, I did not go into this with the intention of arguing with this person. I commented very um, kindly, more kindly than I usually am, actually, um, on someone's TikTok. And I was like, hey, so I just wanted to let you know that Lady Morgan is actually like incorrect Irish grammar um like if you like are looking to call them something I would recommend like the Morgan or on Morgan or Namarigna um and then they responded by belittling me telling me that I was wrong and saying that I was like a an awful awful person because I um corrected them and I was like okay but why do you say Lady Morgan because for those of you who are like don't know what I'm talking about Morgan is a title um, and it literally means like, like on Morgan is the great queen or like the phantom queen, less or so. Um, and so to like say Lady Morgan, you're saying Lady Great Queen. And it's just like, okay, but that's just not it's double titles, just not grammar. <laughs> yeah, like that's just ridiculous. Like you sound like an idiot right now. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you, but you sound insane. It's like Mr. <laughs> Senior like... Owen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, but that's literally what it's like. And it's like, I get that. Um, not everyone like knows Irish and is able to learn Irish, but like these are very, very basic things. And if you are going to be talking about something and you're going to be looking into something and practicing practices that don't belong to you, you're going to want to do your research. Um, <laughs> that's a whole other tangent, however. Um, and once again, I've lost my point, but I will get there. Hold on. The whole debacle can be summed up by saying yikes okay um what we were talking you will benefit what we were talking about is that what were, what were we, we were talking, talking about? about how if you are overly confident and you're just there to fight then yeah that's how you're gonna burn out and that's how either you're gonna burn but burnt out or be pushed out of um spaces that will help you mm-hmm. now now i know why i brought that up <laughs> thank you well i was gonna say was well, look I was partially in the wrong in this situation because at the end of the day, who is she hurting? Um, Like, I mean, there is the arguments we made that because she was a very large creator, she was spreading a lot of misinformation and that is the one that I will stick by. But for example, if it's just one person and like they're just, like they're not creating content or claiming to know anything and they're calling like the Namorigna Lady Morgan, like that's not actually hurting anyone. Yeah. Like if it works for them, How's whatever, yeah. I guess, like yeah like have fun but just don't try to tell people that you're right yeah right and it's like and honestly i was getting at the point here is that and again going back to the chariot is that being forceful is not going to help you either and kind of forcing something up even poor forcing something on yourself because people are obsessed with titles and obsessed with identities and they're like okay if i title myself as this then that means I, it makes me this. It's like, no, there's a lot of things that you have to earn. It's like those people who call themselves like priests and priestesses, yeah. um, but don't actually have any of the credentials or experience to back yeah. that up. Yeah. Like that's, that's makes my, my teeth grind. And if you're doing that for prestige, if you're doing anything spiritual for prestige, and attention and for validation then you need to start from square one at this point and that's going to be one of the main reasons why you're burning out and it's going to be the second reason why nobody's going to want to listen to yes you're going to have your following this is almost turning into a cults episode at this point (laughs) you're going to have your like your little following (laughs) because people are not going to know any different but if you go into a community and you're basically being told that everything is wrong right then maybe mm-hmm. you need to sit down and listen. And I think that a lot of burnout happens from a lot of people kind of pushing against the grain. And 
Mm-hmm. That's not necessarily a healthy way to go because. Oh, either yeah. you. I think that's a huge problem. Actually, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but right while it's on the tip of my tongue, I'm seeing a lot of people, like very, very young people with very little experience and very little like knowledgeable experience as well, starting to create their own practices and their own completely different like magical systems and foundations, which is fine to a certain extent but when you start to uh indoctrinate i mean when you start to share this online (laughs) when you start to like give this to other people and claim that it's like this big long uh tradition that's like fucking generations old and it's all the knowledge and all the power then you need to shut the fuck up oh yeah we see it a lot where people make you can tell it's just made up because it's it's just made up and that's the, th- the killer thing too is that like i've read esoteric books right i've read books um about like like the, the black arts and all that like i've read deep occult pieces please not cavendish not cavendish <laughs> but i've read uh, about like <laughs> traditional craft and things like that and then when people say these things you can tell that it's just made up because it's very media based almost craft and then they're like nope i've been doing this for years and then you find out that their grandmother is like an old mormon or something like it's it hurts because there's people who are listening to that and that's where honestly it's important to research right and i think that's where people can get burnt out too because like okay it's overwhelming because now i have to know all these things so i'm not following other people that's what the beautiful thing is you don't have to follow other people you need you need to make your own damn practice okay yes 100 percent. i i have something to say on that but there's a hilarious um story here that i think everyone will enjoy um so as most of you know i do come from a family of folk practitioners uh but we are irish so we are also catholic practitioners (laughs) shocker someone called it like a guards or whatever but um so one day, I when I was in high school, I think I might have been 15, 14, 15, something like that. I had a book um, that some of you will be familiar with called The Black Arts by Richard Cavendish. And I also, oh, and um, at the same time, I had Liberal Valigious, um, The Book of the Law. And they sat on my nightstand. And one of the days... Um, and this was extremely like out of character for my mother. Like she always respected my privacy going out quite a lot, going growing up quite a lot. Um, but one of the days she picked me up from school and she was like, so we need to have a conversation. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. okay. You're terrifying me right now, but go on. And she was like, so are you in a cult? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? And she was like, so I found some books in your bedside table um, and like one of them was talking about like demon worship and like human sacrifice. And I was like, ah, yes. And then I couldn't figure <laughs> out which book it was, which made it so much worse. Cause I started listing off books and she was like, Those what? The- <laughs> what? You have more of these? <laughs> <laughs> yeah um oh my god no but it was very funny but like basically to, that's just a hilarious anecdote for the don't 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 take any um lesson from that story there is no lesson i'm just an idiot and that was funny but um the lesson does come in that you do need to be foundational and understand your own practice and make your own practice but you don't need to make your own tradition <laughs> Like, it is perfectly okay to be doing things the same as somebody else or be taking inspiration from somebody else. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I'm seeing, like, yeah, like, as I'm saying, like, I'm seeing these people creating traditions. And it's, I'm okay, listen, I will send you some screenshots later. But (laughs) I am seeing people create entire traditions on Twitter right now. And I'm just kind of sitting here and I'm like, you need to chill the fuck out. Yeah. You, you don't need to be doing this right now. So, like be unique and be confident and special in your practice but also not to the point of this yeah not this and this girl. is what, what i'm getting at is that uh, maybe i should say this in a very very clear way if i'm not going to say anchor a billion times i should be saying nuance nuance is important because when i say like i'm sick of I this know, you're like i hate it <laughs> no because like when i mean like not following somebody it's just that are you getting caught up in a pers- cult of personality, right? There's definitely authors and there's definitely creators that I absolutely adore. 
and there's parts of their practice actually there's there's creators i adore where their practice is nowhere near mine and i have no interest in adopting that practice but i still listen and learn because there might be little pieces of it that might be intriguing to me that i might adopt into it but there's nothing wrong with that what i'm getting at is just like don't don't stand people <laughs> even like cult leaders like uh, i don't know don't stand cult don't leaders don't stand cult leaders <laughs> like the only thing i can think of to mind right now is like alistair crowley was an asshole like don't don't stand people like that but you can take pieces of that practice and absolutely adopt it and adjust it to oh, to you and that also comes into again these little mini communities um that we can get a part of um I set the expectation and I say this with all the jokes in the world. I'm like, if you're going to simp for me, simp for me because I'm hot, not because I'm smart. I, I, (laughs) (laughs) (coughs) oh my God, listen, why would you spring that on me like that? That was on Okay. (laughs) I would agree, as someone who Twitter has declared an 8.5 to a 9, if you're going to simp for me, simp, or because, okay, if you've heard me, if you've heard me, me, if you've heard me when I'm living in Ireland, or after I've been on the phone to my grandmother, my accent is very Irish, it's beautiful, simp for me for that. Do it. Don't simp for me because of my knowledge, because let's be honest, I am a human too, and there are gaps in my knowledge. <laughs> All right. And I am upfront about that. But we're going on a tangent at this point because, again, we want to get back into telling how unlike yes, us. No, exactly. Off topic. So what are again? What do you do? So let's let's kind of break this down because we got about fifteen minutes left of this uh, podcast. What would we suggest <laughs> to people if they are burnt out and they want to get back in? I would suggest if you right now are burnt out and you want to get back into your practice, the first thing that I would recommend is not <laughs> because go join if, the church, like, be a good Christian person. <laughs> Don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, okay. If you're, if you've been practicing for all of these months and you've been researching and doing on all this work and effort and it's burnt you out, you're not don't jump straight back in as soon as you start to feel a little bit better what you need to do first is you need to look at what you did the last time you did this and be like okay so i went a little bit too hard here i i pushed myself further than i needed to be pushed and i rushed myself and then i burnt myself out and so yeah basically what i would recommend is doing that look at what fucked you up the last time and very very slowly ease back into it it's not a race yeah don't go back into doing a daily practice if that's what you've been doing it for because honestly again daily practice is a fantastic way to get better and a terrible way to keep consistent <laughs> frankly <I'm... laughs> <laughs> i have to think about that one for a second yeah. but because yes, you will be look, consistent it... until you hate everything to do with it and then you never want to be consistent ever again so um yeah. don't go from a six-month break straight back into a daily practice yeah. A don't daily do practice that. should be natural to you, um, just like mm-hmm. eating or drinking. Like it's something that you're going to want to do because it nourishes you. So yeah. with uh, that being said, I think some of the advice that we gave a little bit, honestly, um, getting into something that kind of um, – I know this it's going to sound a little off because I know a lot of people get really ornery about this for absolutely good reasons. Um, getting into like some sort of fantasy thing, kind of seeing something that makes you feel good about yourself. Like, like you said, getting into a fantasy world and being like, Hey, you know what? This makes me feel fantastic. Like I will watch some like mm-hmm. really good, like witchy horror movies. And I'm like, dude right Ooh, I'll, and i'll yes. watch this stuff and we see this a lot with a lot of practitioners become very very active during like um the fall and halloween season and it's because they're kind of in that environment of the season of the witch right so and mm-hmm. i'm saying looking at this strictly from a witchcraft um, perspective per se but finding something and kind of like kind of surrounding yourself with that aesthetic again is actually going to really help, right? And kind of allowing yourself fall into that aesthetic that is almost just makes you feel good, right? And I think that's kind of yeah, it makes inspires you, you. It encourages it's, you, yeah, it inspires yeah. you. Exactly. Find something that will inspire you again to be like, because you didn't get into this. Let's be realistic, 
listen, 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 listen. I'm going to call everybody out right now. Everybody got into this because they wanted to be cool. Mm -hmm. Or because they wanted to have control. My, my hot take, there are no people who are into like witchcraft specifically and like sort of these sort of practices that aren't here because there is something in their life that they cannot control and that they want to control. Yeah. It's, that's my hot take as someone who did one semester of psychology. There you go. And if it's not because you want to be cool, it's because you want to be in control. And you need to kind of go back to that. You need to be, feel that feeling again. You're like, you know what? I wanted this. And once you kind of get back into that space again, for me, it's watching things that are very aesthetic. Like Sabrina is a good example of something that's... Yes. I was literally about to bring this up. Whenever I'm in a slump, I rewatch... Not the old Sabrina, the new Sabrina. I watch the new Sab- the old Sabrina when I'm sad and want a boyfriend. But um, the new Sabrina, Chilling yes. Adventures of, is very um, it draws very heavily from like occult yes. practices. Obviously, it's fictional, yes. but it has a lot of real life elements in it, and there's a lot of symbology. And if you actually look at each season, um. I can't remember the order or how many seasons there are, but I know that like one of the seasons, like sort of the magic or like the theme of it focuses on um, Gnosticism. And then there's like the, the pagans and whatever in season two or three or whatever. And like, if you actually look at this with a little bit more like of an occult eye, you will start to see all of the sort of symbology and all of the sort of um, like insane connections that you can make to the real world. Um, through this and it's very good show by the way watch chilling adventures of exactly and we're again taking this very much from like a witchcraft um, stance but if you are heathen watch like um watch vikings say percy jackson i dare you yeah (laughs) Yeah, if you're heathen watch percy jackson but no it's like anything that initially inspired you fall back into that a little bit allow yourself and i think that's the biggest problem is people like well it's fiction and i don't want to be attached to people just thinking that I'm like crazy. It's like, no, no, no. You're allowed mm-hmm. to enjoy fiction, right? I'm sure that yeah. the men who watch wrestling and are like, yeah, this makes me feel like a man are don't actually think that it's real. <laughs> but it makes them oh, well, <laughs> well, actually. <laughs> I've met a few. <laughs> but obviously it makes them feel a certain way. Or if you are watching Sex in the City, like you obviously know that this is a highly unrealistic, like depiction of relationships but it still makes you feel good it makes you feel like a boss babe do what you need to do to inspire yourself again and that's where i recommend people starting and then from there fall back in love with your uh uh your anchor practice (laughs) (laughs) no but like listen i have a really good example of this because unironically i became interested in sort of greek mythology and hellenic practices um because I read Lore Olympus. Right? Like, I read l- literally... First of all, go read Lore Olymp- so Olympus. It is I have... Okay, good. you mentioned this before um, on the podcast. So I was like, okay, sounds mm-hmm. good. I have read it all in, like, two fucking days. I stayed up till 3 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> reading this webcomic. It is... It's not even... It doesn't even cost money. It's free, guys. Go read it. It is yeah. so good. Anyway, continue. Webtoon. Yeah. No, but literally, like, I through Lore Olympus, because there are aspects of truth to Lore Olympus. There's a lot of embellished stuff for um, entertainment, because obviously it's not supposed to be, like, historically accurate. And it's so good, because that led me to researching actual his- history and actual mythology. Mm-hmm. And that's what I would do. That's what I would do. If I was a Greek practitioner or someone who was looking into Hellenic Hellenic deities um I would recommend reading Lore Olympus first because like not for knowledge but for excitement yes. like I like that's kind of a hot take no, I guess is. I would recommend reading the fiction before no you're right because the thing is is that it is supposed to make you feel something this is gonna sound cheesy it's supposed to make you feel something in your heart right it's supposed to make you feel something what's not good is <laughs> taking that and making it part of your practice <laughs> cuz that's mm-hmm. where it becomes really dicey cuz um who would have thought the gods are not your friends um but the thing is is that that's where again that wonderful word nuance it's finding that nuance and finding that inspiration again and once you kind of find that inspiration um then you can kind of go into the mundane portions of it which is re-researching your um your practice um i can use tarot for an example in this case where i'm just going to go through the card meanings again just go through the card, uh, keywords and just kind of remind myself a little bit i do that every time i start going to a little bit of a slump i just go my way to 
read through things again. I find little mini books, like books that don't have a whole lot of deep details in it, but I'll just read through it to refresh myself. And that usually ends up dominoed, uh, dominoing into me reading heavier books. And before I know it, I'm back in my practice again. And now I'm not just saying like my tarot practice, because I do that anyway, but I'm talking about I'll start branching out into the things that I re- was doing before that I got burnt out on, like spirit work or Lenormand or like any other types of practices that I do or my deity work, mm-hmm. like it starts domino knowing, but if you start saying, Oh, I got burnt out, I'm going to throw myself right into the thing that burnt me out again. That's a bad idea. Throw yourself into the thing that you loved. Yeah, like for me, um, I quite literally just bought I don't have the book near me. If I did, I would tell you the title. But um, it's literally just a book of like, I think it's Irish mythology and folk tales or something like it's something generic like that with like the green cover and the Celtic designs, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm going to read this book because not because I'm getting information out of it, but because, okay, there will be information. Like it is a book of mythology, like it is going to depict the mythology in a certain way. But this is all going to remind me like why I got into it in the first place, because it's it's entertainment. It's a fantasy sort of type book. Um. Oh, I remember the name of the fucking book series I was talking about earlier. I remember who made it and it was Francis, Ruth Francis Long or, okay, anyway, she's from Dublin and she wrote this wonderful, wonderful fiction series on um the, Ruth Francis Long. Yeah, that's her name. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> But the, the book series, the book series, it's coming hold on i'll get there the okay yeah yeah so there is this three part series and the three books are called a crack in everything a hollow in the hills and a darkness at the there end we go. and basically you did yeah, it there we go three but <laughs> three books and an author i am the best but um this book series it's about the she and the ace she in ireland and so like the fairies and there's aspects of mythology in there too there's a lot of symbology it was written by an irish person who did a lot of research it is fantasy, but it is so, so amazing to read. And it's so much fun for me to read because it's like reading a modern version of like the fairy tales and folk tales that I grew up with. And so it gets me back into my practice. And so like, I'll see like a name or a word or something in the book that's like, oh, well, I don't really recognize this. And then I'll Google it. And then I'll go down a world, ugh, a rabbit hole researching this, which will branch off into other things and other things and other things. And that's how I get back into my practice. Exactly. And it's not just as like, it's not just as simple as like going back to your old things too. It's just finding new things to kind of inspire you as well. That's in that same vein. Right. Um, I was taking a little break from everything and then I watched American Gods and I was just like, oh my gosh, I forgot how fulfilling deity work was and that kind of stepped me back into the practice for a long time um it find inspiration is the best way i can really tell you is that and if you're not inspired step back guess what you're not gonna die tomorrow or maybe you are but you're not gonna die tomorrow (laughs) right you're allowed to take a break you're also allowed to not make this your identity and not make this your personality type you're allowed to do other things than your practice you're allowed to be normal. And again, I think that comes into people having either too high of an opinion of themselves or they're trying to mold themselves into like a fantasy type character or an unrealistic. They have high realistic or overly um, highly. What's the word I'm looking for? Idealistic. Unrealistic. unrealistic. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> they have. Un- <laughs> I just went through the entire gambit then there so they have an un gambit gambit gambit. they have an unrealistic concept of how they should act or should be like it's it's almost like a goth person (laughs) saying i would never wear pink it's just like wear the pink socks on your boots it's okay (laughs) (laughs) that is such an uh, like that is such a that was such an unexpected analogy (laughs) but yeah i mean to literally sum this entire 60 minute roughly episode into a single sentence it's find inspiration again it doesn't have to be and when i say inspiration it doesn't have to be actual like academic or like a magical inspiration in something that's historically based and mythologically accurate whatever 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 it can be fiction it can be anything it can be art it can be painting it can be music it can be drawing it can be singing it can be literally whatever you want but find that inspiration again and if you are unable to find this inspiration then you 
aren't ready to get back into it. I'm sorry, but you are still burnt out and you are lying to yourself if you think that you aren't. Turn in your Pagan card. Um, we're going to be canceling the payments to Pagan Club. <laughs> and You've got three points on your license um, now. Go, Hand yeah, it over. <laughs> go get your baptism because you might as well just be a Christian because you're not allowed to be a Pagan anymore unless you're doing this all day, every day, YOLO. And with that beautiful sentiment i think (laughs) 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 no but for real like like seriously don't stress about it so much if you are burning yourself out every time you pick up a witchcraft book chill out don't pick up the witchcraft book if it's burning you out either choose another book or take a longer break there is nothing like there is no downside to waiting longer because you can do this for as long as you want or for as little as you want and there will always be a community for you to come back to if that is what you're wondering worried that you're going to miss like that is always going to exist don't worry about it chill yeah take a deep breath don't worry about it go outside have a picnic in the park that's what i did it was amazing that sounds amazing it's still freezing cold here so we're i'm gonna have to just suck it up and just lay outside on have a picnic in your car (laughs) do it right in the automobile (laughs) all right but yeah i think that's it i think so too i've said everything i need to say however i've however ramblingly i have said it um (laughs) (laughs) i have been one on high luck you can find me on twitter under the same name i also run the suit sayers t twitter which is at suit sayers underscore t all of my links will be in the description below. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, and I am Katiri from Vinoxus. You can find me at vinoxus.net or on Instagram at the same handle. You can also see me running the Soothsayers T Instagram. All the links are in the link tree that is linked to this episode. The link to link tree. The link to link tree. Yep. <laughs> well, with that, we will see you all on Monday. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.